Hello and welcome back to Talking Extra Short, More Short, whatever you want to call it. Um, a way of us getting a bit more content out. Uh, obviously, the last one we did was with George Smith, current middleweight cage warriors, MMA fighter, a massive lead star. Uh, and today, I'm very honoured to welcome uh, Leeds United Head of Communication, uh, James Mooney. So, good evening. How are you? I'm well, mate. Well, as well as we can be at the moment. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, similar, like, like I said just before I came on air. Uh, um, I'm in a... I suppose if you look at it one way fortunate position that I still get to go to work and sort of have a break from being trapped in the yeah. house. But uh, yeah, um, kind of is where we are at the moment in it. And we've just got to, like you said, see through it. So I think yeah. we'll start with you then, James. So um, how did you end up in football? How, how did that come about? Um, I worked for uh, KCOM for a little while. Uh, KCOM are the, the stadium sponsor of Hull City. The chief executive of KCOM at the time I worked really closely with. This guy called Nick Thompson. Uh, he went over to be the chief executive of Hull City um, and they headhunted me and asked me to go over uh, and do the job. I did some volunteer work in between whilst I was working for KCOM. I was also, uh, I volunteered on a player called Andy Dawson, uh, Michael Dawson's brother, uh, volunteered on his testimonial committee and just went from there really. Uh, went in as marketing manager at Hull City to start with and then they wanted to sort of bring the, the marketing and communications departments together. So I headed that up and I did uh, did five years or so at Hull and then came over to Leeds. I've been with Leeds for about four years now. Yeah, um, sort of stepping from outside of football into football. Was it what you expected it to be, working in a football industry? No, it, it, it's a it's a crazy industry. Um, KCOM is a brilliant company to work for, and they um, it, but it's very corporate. Everything was very... There's brand guidelines for everything. There's there's um, communications, uh, you know, certain wording that you have to use with every document, etc. Football's not like that. And actually, um, I met a guy uh, at Hull when I first went in there who was the commercial, the head of commercial, and he really taught me the football industry. Um, so I brought uh, at the time social media was not being utilised by football clubs particularly, uh, so I was able to bring a bit of that experience in. But then uh, it's a guy called Linton Brown. Uh, he really showed me how football worked and how football operated. And um, it, it's completely different to any other industry I've ever worked in. I assume all sports are quite similar, but football is definitely um, definitely fairly unique. Yeah, so obviously you are now current head of communications at Leeds. So what does your role sort of... Um sort of mean on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, what what sort of do you look after in terms of the comms in and out of the club? Well, I'm really lucky in the fact that it's a really varied role. Um, I look after the the overall communication strategy, reporting directly into uh, the chief executive. And I also work very closely with the owner. Uh, I work closely with the first team squad. Normally, you'd work closely with the manager, but obviously Marcelo, he, he does his own thing. Uh, so I don't have as much... I have a very pleasant relationship with Marcelo, but not. Uh, uh, I don't really give him much advice on stuff. So I work closely with the players, closely with Angus, closely with Andrea, closely with Victor. My team runs social media, PR, general press, website, basically anywhere where the, the only area that I'm not really in control of content-wise is LUTV. And again, there's a, there's a strong working relationship with them uh, to ensure that the overall output that comes from the club uh, is to a standard that keeps the fans happy and impresses them and shows them that we care, really. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, certainly in the last sort of five, six years, uh, certainly under Andrea, I think there's been a marked difference in the comms coming out of the club. And yeah. We've spent I mean, a few times on talking short. Go it, it did start with Chilino. Uh, I think towards the end of Massimo's reign, he was very aware of the fact that, that there'd been some communications issues. And um, and Ben Mansford brought me in. It wasn't Andrea or Angus, it was Ben Mansford, uh, who who started the trajectory that we're on now. He, um, that season uh, that season we had with Gary Monk, we re-engaged the community, we um, we performed on the pitch, and, and we became a better club that year. And that was under Chilino and Ben, but they, they were doing that knowing that Andrea was on the way and, and that's the way he'd want to run things. So... Andrea's been the inspiration behind it all, but you have to give uh, you have to give Mansford, and obviously to an extent Massimo, um, the credit for for setting it up. Really, yeah, um, yeah, I'd agree. And I, for me, obviously, on the outside looking in as a as a Leeds United podcaster, along with all, and just as a fan, 
Um, the club certainly feels more accessible, if that makes sense. That's good. Um, yes. A lot, a lot more sort of on demand, you know. Um, obviously, the, the social media team, you know, we uh, Craig Wilson, who's obviously got rave reviews this year for his uh, his social media stuff. But yeah, the guys at LUTV as well, you know, there's, there's content there readily available from the club, and yeah, um, certainly in the time you've just said, the club feels a lot closer to the to the general fan base than I think it ever has done. Um, That's the aim. In, we're, we're built on Leeds United fans, so uh, Jordan Owens, my press officer. Um, and obviously, the infamous Digital Wilson. They're massive Leeds fans, and they want the content to um, they want the content to reflect uh, what matters to Leeds fans and and what matters. I mean, football in general, but what has, Leeds is a one club city. Community is everything to the supporters, and and a, a united together approach. And I think we've managed to to get that right over the last few years. Obviously, there's been some hiccups in certain instances, but generally, we've tried to become a a club that's within the community again and, and engaging and, and you've got to give Angus a lot of credit for that as well because ultimately I report to Angus so Craig if Angus didn't allow me to give Craig the freedom to go and do the stuff that he does you know we'd be in a very different situation um so engagement is key community is key and we're really lucky with the bunch of players we've got as well that they allow us um the access and and the and the opportunity to do what we're doing yeah um that brings me on swimmingly uh, sometimes that difficult is it to sort of manage the comms that come out not from uh, from the club kind of angle, so you know from players, coaches, uh, youth team players. But do the lads get um, sort of media training? Do they get like sort of obviously not very strict guidelines, but they, do they kind of get directed in what they should and shouldn't be putting out? Because ultimately they represent the club. Yeah, w w again we're lucky that the people at the top of the club have created a culture where we don't really have people involved who would um, who would take things to to extremes, whether it be in social media or everyday life or on the pitch. Um, so yeah, there is there is some media training, um, but I think the world of football comms, particularly where social media is concerned, has grown massively in the last few years. Um, and the young players are coming into it at times as clued up as, as the people that are working at the club. Uh, and you have to embrace that and really try and find, um, try and take some inspiration from it at times. Um, and in terms of actual managing this group of players, they're they're easy. We have a WhatsApp group where we all communicate if we want any interviews doing, if we want um, if they've got any appearances or anything like that. And they're absolutely brilliant. That they're a great bunch. They're the best bunch I've worked with by a long way. Um, so it's not particularly hard. It's uh, it's there's a lot of internal communication, whether it's from the board to us or us to the players. Um, if there are things that are cropping up, we'll we'll get in touch with them and, and say, you know, you need to be across this, you need to be aware of this. We'll often put briefings together before any interviews that are set up. But they're just really easy to work with and, and there's a there's a there's a constant communication, which is much easier than going into a room as somebody that doesn't really know someone and telling them, right, this is what you've got to do and this is how you've got to do it. It's just a there's just a, a constant strong relationship between my team, the first team, the owners, uh, the board. And then the academy, the Matt Jackson uh, and the 18s, Matt Jackson, Neil Sullivan, um, uh, Billy Russell, that's a proper education. That's a proper football education. So uh, even they're coming into the 23s and the first team with a proper head on the shoulders, which generally helps in these situations. Yeah, definitely. Um, so two things on the pitch then. Uh, how much of a roller coaster has it been these last, well, season and a half up until this uh, impromptu pause? Um, you know, how much of an enjoyable and slightly emotional journey has it been for you guys sort of inside the club? Because obviously we go to our normal places of work, however that may be, and, you know, we, we get our sort of football fix, you know, either, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, following Saturday, when, you know, although it's there sort of bubbling in the background, you guys sort of live in the yeah. internal bubble 24-7, seven days a week. So, you know, the the incredible season we had last year and the incredible season we were in the process of having this year, how much of that been a journey for yourself and, and the rest of the guys at the club? Unbelievable, really. I mean, uh, from the minute... I really like Paul Heckingbottom, and I know he gets a lot of criticism from Leeds fans because of the Barnsley connection, because it didn't quite work out for him. But Paul's a really good guy and a really good coach, and a lot of the lads that are still key to the team now really got on with, with Paul as well. So from Paul leaving to... You know, that was, that was something that 
I think all of us, Victor, myself, Angus, anybody that worked closely with Paul and saw what he was trying to achieve, but just unable to because of circumstance. Um, that was a that was a, a, a pretty low point for us all because we all were desperate for him to to do well and to achieve. And then this whisper just started, mainly from from Victor Orta, because he's a pretty loud guy, and if he whispers something, <laughs> like a shout for anybody else. But um, these 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 suggestions that Marcelo Bielsa was going to come and um, and then that process and and working on well what would it look like if when he came he's not going to do the press interview so I can't brief I can't settle one-on-ones um, it's going to be a completely new experience for me how are we going to announce him how are we going to educate people on him we knew that the big media attention was going to come our way um, so that was really exciting and then we just hit the ground running and don't forget at the same time the documentary crew was in place and we knew they were capturing all of that. And it, it, it was just the last 18 months have been the best 18 months of my life. It's because when you're happy in your workplace, you're happy in your, your personal life and, and everything falls into place. And it, the people I work with are brilliant and they've allowed us to go on this journey with them from the players to Orta to just everybody. I can't speak highly enough of the people within the club. And it's just been the best experience. And I, I'm very, very confident that We'll finish the um, we'll finish the process off as we need to, and, and and get promotion whenever public health allows us to. But it's been I can't put into words what a, what an experience it's been. Even the day of the playoff, the the the, the second leg against Derby, that range of emotion of at, at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting there with an empty an empty stadium, thirty five thousand scarfs no way to put them on the seats because I'd underestimated the situation massively. And everybody from the club, from everybody from the foundation, from every department came out and helped me put these scarves out on the seats. And there was a proper unity and you just felt this is a proper football club again. And yet the way that it ended, whilst it was horrendous, you saw the unity amongst people. You saw how much it mattered to people. You saw grown men in, in, in absolute absolutely devastated floods of tears and it makes you proud to be a part of something like that and, and that it, it matters so much to us is is testament to to the fans and the people that are there and, and just what an amazing club it is so the long and short that the, the long and short of it is it's it's the best place you could imagine to work and with some of the best people and I'm incredibly lucky and incredibly grateful yeah um, and that brings us on hopefully if we do get the job done when public health allows us you're right with that um your beloved Everton, um, yeah. potentially visiting Allen Road and us visiting, uh, it'll still be Goodison next year, I think, won't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be Goodison uh, for a long time, yeah. So, so will there be the fixtures, should we get promoted? And I don't want to sort of count as chickens. Um, my best day was, day was uh, we beat Liverpool 3 1 at the KCOM, and that was my best day. Beating them was pretty, it doesn't get much better than that, to be honest. Everton's a difficult one because my, my dad struggles to not, my dad's very, very supportive. Um, I'm, you know, he, he Leeds is definitely the second result that he looks out for, and he used to come to all the whole games. And he comes to the he comes to a lot of Leeds fixtures, but he is diehard Evertonian. And I'd say to him, "Come on, Dad, if Everton score, don't jump up." And every time he would, and I'd get funny looks from various people from within Hull City at the time. So, yeah, it'd be nice to go back to Goodison professionally um, as a as a football club employee. But um, I think beating Liverpool. It's more important than playing than playing Everton to me, which is weird. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so finally, Mix. Obviously, I'm aware that you've uh, you've got a young family, and it'll be about uh, story time and bedtime. Um, um yeah, yeah. We're, we're four minutes into bath time. <laughs> uh, how are the lads and uh, the rest of the sort of coaching staff and, and team around Leeds getting on with the current public health, well, pandemic, worldwide pandemic emergency that we're currently encountering at the minute. Um, you know, how is sort of life for the for the guys? It must be equally as frustrating for them as it is for for everybody else professionally. It is, and it's worrying and it's concerning. I think you can see from some of the comms that 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 Stuart Dallas and Liam Cooper have put out how much this matters to people and how concerned people are and how worried people are. But at the same time, um, there's a there's a determination to to get back on the pitch and and get promoted as well. Public health obviously has to take priority and, and as a as a community leader <clears throat> sorry excuse me as a community leader and as a um and as a, a, a group of people that are deemed as role models as the players are they feel the responsibility to get the messages out 
to try and help support um, the public and particularly Andrea has took this this situation incredibly personally because he's from Milan and um, and therefore he saw this coming, which is why we took a lot of the the we were one of the first clubs to take precautions and and to put um, to change the match day situation and to uh, to change the training schedules and really put a, a block around the players. Um, and so it, it's heartbreaking and it's devastating for everybody from from the playing staff and and the board and everybody. But um, that is coupled with this just the, just desperate to get back out onto the pitch. So the, I'm sure you've seen on Instagram they're all on their uh, on the push rods in the front rooms and weights. And I think I saw one of the players using one of the kids as a, a dumbbell uh, over the last few days. And they're doing everything they can to keep fit because Marcelo will batter them if they come back and they're not. Um, but public health has to come first and, and caring for the community because the football club's nothing without the community. We've seen that over the last few years. We've seen how bringing the football club and the community together has, has helped. The, the, there's no... Um, there is an absolute direct correlation between re-engagement in the community, attendance is going back up, results on the pitch. There's 110% a correlation there. And so we appreciate that we're a big part of the community and, and the community has to be safe before we can carry on. So it's it's strange and, it, and it's unusual and it's stuff that the players aren't used to doing, but they've just got to get on with it because we've got to get promoted. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, like the old saying goes, if we um, sort of nationally march on together and stick together, then we can sort of flatten this curve as the government um, advice is doing at the minute. And, and the quicker we can do that, we can protect, you know, the vulnerable and the people around us and we can get football back and absolutely you know, start, start returning some form of normality back to sort of the world. But I think we've got um, a battle ahead first. And, you know, if we stick together and all that type of thing, then we can we can overcome that. And then, you know, and then not, I know what you do for a living. I know what you do for a living, Gary, and, and there'll be a lot of Leeds, the Leeds family that uh, work for the NHS. My my mum was a nurse for a lot of years. My wife works for the NHS, and and it's we got to protect the vulnerable. We've got to look out for our NHS, and and because it's it's what makes this country great. And we've got some massive battles on our hands in the meantime, and that's got to take priority. But rest assured, the minute that 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 battle is won, it's back onto football, and and they're gonna have to be fit and ready. Otherwise, Marcelo will kill them. Yeah, definitely, uh, and that'll be a. A much lauded day when it does come back. So, yeah, a massive thanks, James, for giving us your time. And uh, sorry for interrupting bath time. No um, you know, uh, hopefully keep safe and we'll see you sort of when football returns, if not before. And again, thanks for your time. Uh, cheers for everybody who's uh, watched this. Make sure you share it, make sure you like it. And we'll keep trying to do these interviews best we can. Uh, just keep getting some content out for all you guys who are isolated at home. Um, and yeah, keep safe, look after each other. And again, another thanks to James. Thank you very much for oh, your time. Cheers, Good mate. Luck. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Bye -bye. Bye -bye. See you, mate. Bye-bye.